Hi, this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm very excited because we have our very special guest. He is a fitness expert. His name is Scott Friedman, and he is one of our podcast experts. He has his own podcast with The Advisor, and so I'd like you to go check it out because he has some really great podcasts that he's already recorded, and it's there for you to listen to. So today, I love it because he wants to talk about why diets suck. So I'm going to give it to Scott, and he's going to tell you why diets suck and what you really need to do if you want to look and feel your best. So take it away, well, Scott. Thank you. Yeah, it's not sure I want to talk about. It. I just think it may be a valuable insight yeah. uh, that people might be struggling with. It's, you know, it's right around the, the New Year's time. Generally, people are looking at health and fitness and they're trying to change their life, right? Whether it's losing right. weight, gaining muscle. And, you know, every year there's always a new diet out there. There's, you know, a couple of years ago, it was keto was the biggest thing, low carb. Yes. And then you have paleo, Whole30, South Beach, the potato diet. I mean, there's there's so <laughs> many diets out there that I can't even, you know, there's the hundreds, right? Yeah. And, you know, it's, I don't want to rag on diets. And this is not, a, this is not going to get into the nitty gritty of nutrition per se, because I think, and this might surprise people, I think one of the biggest reasons that I think diets suck is the mentality behind the diet. And so there's three main components that I, you know, that I usually talk about when it comes to why diets don't work, why they suck, and what you can do to avoid these three major pitfalls. And it's probably not what you think at all. It's not like, oh, it's not sustainable because you need keto. It's not sustainable because you need carbs and this and that. Uh, we're not going to get into the nitty gritty. I think the nitty gritty is annoying. There's plenty of people talking about it. No one's talking about this kind of stuff, I think, in my opinion, yeah. uh, or at least not as many as there should be. And I'd like to preface the conversation really with, I don't think a diet in and of itself is necessarily bad. You know, right. I've had success on the keto diet. I've done it. I've had success on the paleo diet. I've done it. Right. I've lost weight. I've gained weight. And you have, if you talk to anyone in the keto, I'm using keto. I don't mean to pick on them. I'm just going to use them as the easiest one. Everyone knows it. Yeah. It's like, Hey, do you like keto? Half the crowd is going to say they love it. They can't live without it. They feel amazing. They've seen so many great results. Great. Awesome. The other half of the crowd is going to be like, this is terrible. This is horrible. It's not worth it. You can't get any results. And it's like, okay, how can polar opposites and like science, you know, approving both sides, basically, because everyone can write to an article that says this or articles that says this, how can they both be true? Right. And I think the reality is that the truth is somewhere in the middle, but a lot of it's based on the person doing the diet itself. Right. And I think it comes to whatever their perception is of what they're trying to do that can make or break a diet. Obviously there's, there's factors, but I think their perception is a major indicator of the, if they're going to succeed or not. So that's how right. I came up with these three different topics or three different reasons why diets kind of suck in my right. eyes. Now, so oh, yep. I was going to, I was going to say, just go finish what you said. Cause I want to hear what you have to say. This I was going to, I was going to jump right into it. So let yeah, me know. Jump right into it. Jump right okay, into so, it. Okay. So, so the top three reasons. So number one, I call it external versus internal factors. Number two, I call it uninformed optimism or the valley of despair is what I've been calling it recently. It kind of sounds a little ominous. And number three is the infinite paradox. So those are the three topics that I'll kind of, you know, briefly dive into um, to kind of give people an example of what they can, what they shouldn't do and what they can do in order right. to, you know, achieve their fitness goals this year, whether it's losing weight, whether it's gaining muscle, whatever it is, the goal is that you can use these three methods or at least avoid these three issues in order to see success. All right. So I want to hear them. I want to, I'm really into, I want to hear what, what are these three methods? Okay. So the internal versus external uh, factors. So basically what does this mean? Well, first, what is internal? Internal is something that comes from within. For example, I want to lose weight. That's internal because I want to do something and I have, I, I have to do something to do that. External is you are using something that's not within you. For example, a diet protocol, a smoothie protocol, a, right. a detox protocol, right? It's something external. The issue we find ourselves is that it's very difficult, at least from the a diet, again, we're talking about diet perspective, yeah. is if you have an internal desire and you match it with an external uh, external protocol, yeah. you, have, you have to do it in perpetuity in order for it to continue to work over time. The right. issue is when the external stops, the internal will then fail or revert back to what it was doing before. So what do right. I mean by this? Very simply put, if you are following 
a specific diet protocol. Again, I don't mean to peg on keto. It's just so easy. Uh, and I actually like keto. So I'm not, I'm not saying do it, but I don't, I don't hate them. Uh, let's say you're doing keto and the protocol is pretty simple. It's don't eat a lot of carbs. You get like 20 net carbs a day. And that's a very specific term they use. And that's it, right? Because then you're going to use ketones to do all this stuff and you'll lose weight and your body count, all this great. Awesome. Great. You're doing yeah. the protocol that keto allows you to or a smoothie protocol or this seven day water detox protocol, whatever the protocol is. And you're going to see great results, right? I right. saw I lost 20 pounds in two months doing keto. Now, here's what the issue is. People think, oh my gosh, I lost the weight. This is great. I'm going to stop doing the protocol. And then they think the results are going to remain the same. They start eating carbs again. They start kind of, even if the protocol says don't do that, they kind of, that's how most people screw it up as they do that anyway. Yeah. And they start to gain the weight back in a way that wasn't meant to be. And so when you rely on an external protocol, your mindset going into it needs to be, this is what I'm doing in perpetuity or I'm doing it in perpetuity. And when I stop, I'm going to understand how to maintain where I'm currently at. But yeah. usually one of the two are missed when people are doing diets or any sort of detox program. And so, yeah. and, the, and the reason in, uh, internal is so important at the same time is that internal comes from within, which means if I take an internal goal and I take an internal approach of, I am going to learn this. I'm going to study it. I'm going to go on YouTube every day for five, 10 minutes and study. Okay, what? how do I lose weight? I'm going to listen to a podcast like my podcast and I'm going to figure out how do I lose weight? I'm going to learn the knowledge, learn the skill set, and then I could do it on my own forever. Yeah. That's internal, internal, right? Now, if you're going into it saying, I have a client, for example, who he is very much aware that he will not do the internal work. He, he wants the goal, but he, he wants the external. He wants the accountability, which is great. He wants, he wants to make sure there's someone keeping him accountable on a regular basis. So he trains with me on a regular basis, three days a week. And he right. doesn't train without me, but he knows that. He knows every single year that he's spending X amount of money. He's doing it X amount of times a year, X amount of times a month. And he knows that if he stops, He's going to lose all the progress because that's how he went into it. But mentally, he went into it knowing that. So that's how you solve the problem is when you're looking at your goal, make sure that it aligns with the protocol that you're trying to align yourself with. And so if it's, oh, I just want a trainer for 12 sessions and then I'll be in shape and then I'm done. It's not going to work because the second mm -hmm. the trainer goes away, you haven't learned anything. And therefore, you're going to go back to square one. Yeah. Now, if you go into it trying to learn using the external for an internal gain, you can learn everything. That personally, I think that's the best way to do it. Use the external, learn everything you have to learn, and then do it yourself so you can stop paying for it. That's like, and to me, that's the best of both worlds. You're saving time and you're saving money in the long run, but that's the internal external factor in a nutshell. And we get those crisscrossed too often, and people find them, people find it very annoying. And people find it like, okay, what do I do? I can't succeed. This is terrible. And that's the reason why is because the, the goals don't, they don't, they don't, they're not together. Right. Yeah. They're crossing paths, but they're never on the same path. Right. I find it, you know, it's so many people I know, you know, they they go up and down, up and down like a roller coaster when yeah. it comes to weight. And it's so hard. And I, I've known people that have lost, you know, 70 pounds. And then all of a sudden, you know, within a short period of time, they gained half of it back or most of it back. And it's just it's it's so hard. And, I, you know, sometimes it's it's. um you, you know, people are, they, they use food as a coping mechanism too, you know, so it's, it's, it's hard because, or they just love food, you know, and at least when you're working out and you're, you know, it, it's, uh, it balances, you know, you're, you're burning some of those calories you're intaking. So, you know, but um, I feel like, you know, like when you're saying external and internal, you know, there are so many times like, you know, I, I, I do all the protein shakes and this and that, and I, I, um, you know, and, and mentally I, I live a healthy lifestyle, but for me personally, it's like my weight has plateaued and it might be just because of my age, but I feel like for the last 10 years, I've been trying to lose those last 10 pounds and they don't want to go anywhere. They just, <laughs> they just stay there, you know, no matter what I do. And it's like, maybe is it because sometimes because we're, you know, we come from a country that has larger portions, are we just not, not even realizing it, but we're eating maybe more than we should be eating, you know, more calories intake even though it doesn't seem like a lot it is a lot I, I think from my 
experience in this. And I've, I've worked with a few hundred people on this. And one of the things that without fail usually happens is we don't realize how much we're eating on any given day. I mean, it's so easy to go into a bag of chips or even a bag of granola, which is relatively healthier, yeah. healthier than chips and eat it and not realize, wow, that was 400 calories. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's a great story where my, my dad was, uh, he was trying to lose weight and he eats fairly healthy. I mean, there's really yeah. no there's nothing too negative in his diet and he's changed it over the years and he's done a great job with it, but he's not losing weight. So I take a look at it and I go, I'm like, you said you eat this bag of almonds every day. He's like, yeah. I'm like, well, how many calories? I don't know. Well, let's look at it. I go, okay, big bag of almonds. It has like seven servings. So it's like 700 calories. I'm like, well, how much of this? I go, eat the whole thing. I go, you eat the whole thing. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, I thought it was healthy. I go, it is healthy but you're overeating on calories and therefore you're not going to lose weight. So I think part of it is, yes, we, we definitely underestimate the amount of calories we have. I would wager if everyone listening right now, if you're like, I can't lose those 10 pounds, I can't lose weight, create a food journal for three days and just track what you normally eat on, like, on every single thing you eat for three days. Two things will happen. One, you'll realize that uh, you're eating more than you thought you were. Like, holy crap, I didn't realize that that amount of olive oil was 120 calories. I thought it was 30. And right. that, you know, I didn't realize this trusting was so do the do the work for two to three days. So you'll realize that, or it won't be worth eating because you don't want to track it. So you'll just take it out of your diet. You'll take it out of how you eat and yeah. then you'll lose the calories that way. But every time you you sneak an Oreo as you walk by the cabinet that you're not accounting for in your head, you'll have to track that and you'll realize, wow, I'm eating a lot more than I thought I was. That could be it. at the same time. And I don't want to get too in the nitty gritty of it, but at the same time, you could also be on the other end of the spectrum where you're eating not enough. Because right. if you eat below a certain caloric intake, generally speaking, a thousand calories, yeah. uh, it could be 12, whatever it is, and you eat at or below that net on a regular basis, your body is signaling starvation mode. And when your body signals this on a very basic level, it's like, well, I'm not going to burn any fat. I'm going to store all my fat. And that means to burn the same amount of weight that you did before, you need to do actually let more calories burn now, even though you're eating less. And so it's a terrible mechanism. So for example, this is a great example. They did a study on four, I believe it was 14, the biggest loser uh, winners or contestants where they lost like 200, hundred pounds, whatever it is in that very short amount of time. Yeah. And the study over six years showed that uh, basically everyone gained all the weight back. Really? Barring like one person. Everyone gained the weight back and it got worse. And because of the way they lost the weight, their metabolism slowed down, even oh, though they gained all wow. the weight back. So as you lose weight, your metabolism actually gets slower because of uh, energy conservation for the most part. And so, uh, and your body gets used to it eventually. But the idea is like, they lost all this weight and they gained it all back because number one, external factor, they weren't, they didn't learn anything. So it's a great example to my first point. And yeah. the second point is that they gained all the weight back and their meta metabolism slows down. Well, why does that happen? Because the way that we do diets, when we go yo-yo back and forth or crash diets and all these different things affect us so negatively. But the idea is, okay, if I, let's say I weigh 170 right now right. and to maintain my weight, I have to eat, call it 2,200 calories a day. Yeah. If I'm consistently eating less than that, let's say it's 1,800 calories a day to lose weight, eventually my body's going to say, hmm, you don't need 2,200. Let's lower how much output our body's doing to 1,900. So now I'm still eating 1,800, but now my weight loss is stagnated. I'm like, that's weird. So what do I do? Well, naturally, I got to lower my calories. So now I go to 1,400 or 1,500, start losing weight again. Body goes, what are you doing? lowers the, the threshold again and now you're in this constant battle of like you know trying to fight your metabolism trying to fight your body in terms of energy storage and energy yield and i think that's what we get caught into a lot of is like this we have to start reverse dieting and doing all these different crazy things because we're eating so low so both both are true it all depends on your very specific situation right wow that's a lot to take in. That's, that's good though. I, you know, because a lot of times you don't realize how much you're really eating. Like you said, like with your dad, with the almonds. And it's really interesting when you talk about the threshold and how your metabolism changes, you know, yeah. and then you have to change your calorie intake and then your body keeps changing and, and it keeps, you know, give, giving mixed signals. So it is, it's really hard. I, I guess, you know, that's why sometimes it's good to be with a fitness coach because they can kind of really open your mind up and really, you know, help you keep tabs with this stuff. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's hard. It's hard for everyone. I mean, and I, you know, I try to make it as simple as humanly possible. Just, you know, eat healthy, be in a, reg a regular balance. And if you're on a diet every so often, come back up and not always be in a deficit. Cause it's tough. It's taxing and your body doesn't want to change your body's like, 
uh, I don't like this, send hormones, let's stop this right away, which is yeah. another reason why people fail at their goals. So they jump into it too fast, their body freaks out and they're like, nope, not we're not doing this today. You're gonna go lay on the couch and eat some chips because we need the energy. Yeah. Uh, and your body is, your body is a very, uh, very um, uh, enticing, has enticing uh, uh, goals for you when it, when it doesn't want you to do certain things. It's very true. That is so true. That is so true. So, you know, what would you suggest to people who want to like, you know, start making goals for the new year and, and want to start like really trying to lose weight and get the body that they really, you know, they set in their mind to get, like, what would you, what would you say to them? Like, how would you get them on the right track? And we talked about internal and external, but what are some easy steps, how someone can get started? Well, I think the first thing with the internal external, uh, the number one uh, thing is, uh, you know, understand what the goal is. Like, what do you actually want? Right. And then what does it actually take to get there? So break it down. Like what, if you want to lose weight, what does that require of you? When you can become specific on your goal, it's a lot easier to then identify what needs to happen. Uh, what needs to happen. So for example, I want to lose 20 pounds in five weeks. Okay, great. Maybe 10 weeks, right? Something, something that's reasonable and break down the specifics. What do you have to do to lose those 20 pounds? Well, I got to start, I got to get a gym membership. I go to the gym three to four times a week. I got to go for 30 to 40 minutes. I got X, Y, and Z. Break it down because when you have a large issue and it becomes this monster under the bed and it's it's really it's it's hard it's this intangible creature it's like i gotta lose 100 pounds oh my gosh that is so many pounds yeah. but when you break it down to its smallest parts of okay what do i have to do today what do i have yeah. to do this hour what do i have to do in this next 10 minutes what can i do just little action items to break it down so when you break down your goal into small action items it becomes a lot easier to achieve the goal in the long run because you're just focusing on the action items you have to take because you know that these actions are going to lead you towards the goal. So that's one thing that you can do is break down what the goal is to its little parts. If you don't know how to do that, get someone who can help you or study it on your own. You have two ways to kind of to go about that. But th that is really, a, a, a that's how I do everything is I, I take the time to study it. I'm like, okay, like, how do I do this? How do I do and I break it down. What are the action items? All those different things. The second thing is real. I think this is really important. Realize that along the way with these goals is that you're not going to feel good. We have this weird perception that we're going to feel good all the time when we're trying to achieve our fitness goals. Not true. In fact, it's the polar opposite. We're not almost not supposed to feel good. And right. we have this, oh, if I don't feel good or if I feel tired today, then I shouldn't go. I disagree respectfully. I think that your body might be pushing against you, but the reality is consistency over time is extraordinarily important and your mind will come up with any reason it can not to have change. And therefore yeah. you need to ignore it sometimes. So when you're doing these things, understand that the idea of not feeling good is totally okay. Motivation is fleeting. Motivation is not trustworthy. It's mm -hmm. like a cheating girlfriend or boyfriend. You can't trust it. Let it, it's there to get it started, but then we got to cut it off, get rid of it. And we have to use habit building and discipline in order to take over. So what does that look like? The first two weeks of new year's great example, 70% of people give up within the first two weeks of new year's for health and fitness goals, roughly. And then like roughly 85% give up after four weeks or something like that. Some <laughs> crazy high numbers. Yeah. 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 Well, part of it could be is that they're no longer motivated because motivation goes away. And no one's motivated in the Midwest right now in the US when it's, you know, zero degrees, negative 25 wind chill, yeah. football's being rescheduled all over the country, whatever it is, whenever this airs, right? Yeah. It, it, it's crazy that no one's, I'm not motivated to wake up, go walk 10 minutes to the gym and figure things out. But what I am is discipline because I use the motivation right. to start understanding what I had to do from an action standpoint. And I started to get good at it. And then eventually motivation was gone. And I still had the remnants of motivation, which is discipline. So right. you create discipline from the actions that you had when you were motivated versus right. I'm so happy. I want to do this. I'm motivated. And then it's gone. And you're like, oh, <laughs> well, that's weird. I guess I shouldn't be doing this. No, you should still be doing it. You just need to learn to transform it into discipline and use exactly. that. So how to do that is basically just keep going consistently and know that you have to put your head down and keep going over time. Right. And that's, that's excellent advice. I know for, for me, I think sometimes we also collect bad habits and it's so sometimes it's so hard to break those bad habits. And for me, for some reason, I'm good all day long. I'm great. And then it comes nighttime. And if I, I guess, you know, maybe I didn't eat enough during the day and I might eat a little bit more for dinner or I might, 
I might, you know, is it, I look at a vegetable and I look at a pasta and I shouldn't be picking the pasta, but I'm so hungry from being so good and having smoothies and this and that all day long. I pick the pasta. I'm like, ah, it's okay. I was good all day. And then at nighttime around 10 o'clock, I'm sitting in my bed. This is all the time. And I get that craving for anything, something, popcorn, whatever. And it's mm. like, how do you break those bad habits? How do you break the craving? Yeah. How do you break the temptation? Because temptation and, and cravings are, I think, what kills people when it try they're trying to lose weight. Great question. And when I have a real answer for you, I'll let you know because I, <laughs> and trainers are no different. We all have our different kind of mechanisms to overcome it. Cause guess yeah. every night I go through the same thing, seven 30 rolls around and I'm like, I need to eat something bad. Like I just have this urge to have sugar cause we're all addicted to it. Yeah. And I'm like, I need something. So here are some things I specifically do in those situations that might help you. Hopefully it does. Number one, <laughs> is the best way to resist temptation is to avoid temptation. That's just the number one. So don't right. buy it. Don't buy it. If you can avoid buying something, don't buy it. It's the number one piece of advice. Obviously it doesn't work for everyone because you might not buy the groceries. Someone else does. You have kids. They need right. the pop tart. I get that. So number two is make it harder, like even a quarter of a percent harder to get the food. What do I mean by this? So if it's at eye level, let's say your fruit roll-ups yeah. or your Oreos are at eye level, move them two shelves higher or two shelves lower so they're not in eye level, right? right. That will, because two things, one, it's not right away. You're not getting yeah. just absolutely bombarded, which by the way, why do cereal aisles, uh, you know, have all the, the, the best food in the middle of the aisles? So it's right. eye line, right? If it's not mm -hmm. eye line. You're not initially going to be staring at it. And when you open right. the cabinet every day, it's not reinforcing itself. And it creates that tiny bit of extra effort to yeah. reach up here or to go down here and you might not do it. All right. There's a chance you just do it less. Right. So you could try that. Another thing is turn, turning the boxes around because the backs of the boxes are not meant for marketing. Yeah. And so it doesn't, it doesn't attract your eye in the same way. Uh, those are a couple of things you can do just to not to have it. Uh, other things is you do replacement. So people love the positive reinforcement aspect of things or the replacement version. So instead of, you know, oh, I can't have this. Uh, you know, you need to replace. Okay. So things like fruits, you know, blueberries, strawberries, blackberries, raspberries, grapes, right. cantaloupe, uh, uh, what else? Honeydew, things like that. Those are good substitutes for yeah. that kind of that sugar need you have. Do those instead. Um, you know, some people are like, oh, that's terrible. But well, I mean, look, got to try something, right? Right. Another option is give in a little bit, right? And what you can do, what I do, and I'm a little psych psychotic with it, but I have Ziploc bags or Tupperware, and I will literally put in the serving size that I want ahead of time. Yeah. And then it's ready to go. So if it's, I only know I want two Oreos, I will literally prepare two Oreos and put that out knowing that I'm allowed to have that later. Right. Um, and so like, but then you're pre-preparing. So when you have the willpower in the morning, and not at night because willpower is the battery depletes overnight and sleeping yeah. regenerates it. When you have the willpower, plan ahead, like put it in a Tupperware container or in a plastic bag or a Ziploc bag. And then you can, and then at night when you have no willpower, it's already made for you. And maybe that helps you not put your hand in the bag right. and have 50 Oreos, right? Those are a handful of ways that I, uh, that I do in order to kind of avoid the cravings or resist the cravings. The last thing is I have mild candy. Like if you do like a lifesaver or a Jolly Rancher and you yeah. kind of just like suck on it for five minutes, that also alleviates that like absolute need to have it as well. So those are a couple right. of tips that I use personally that I have found beneficial and helpful to clients as well. Oh, that's great. I like that. I like that idea a lot. And, and you know, I, I also have a question, like a lot of times when it comes to dieting, you know, you have, you have people, everyone has their own theory. And then you'll hear people say, oh, you could lose weight and just, you know, focus on the greens, just eat, you know, eat clean and focus on green and you'll lose weight. And then, but then if you don't exercise, then you have a lack of, uh, of circulation in your body. And then, you you know, lots of things could happen. You know, I, I think joint pain, lot, you know, you can have, ache, you start things could start happening if you really don't move your body around and get enough of circulation going on in your body. Um, you know, what's your intake? And, and for exercise, and you have some of those people who say, oh, you only need 15 minutes a day. And then you have some of those people that are in the gym for five, six, seven hours, like, like, you know, maniacs exercising. What's the, what's the truth about, you know, losing weight? Do you, do you need to cooperate a uh, fitness and exercise into your diet? Or are these people who are saying just eat green and you'll lose weight and you don't need exercise. And then if you do need exercise, how much exercise is really good for you? How much, you know, because some, you know, you do need a recovery or two days of recovery, I assume. 
It might be, you know, it's it's a very, I don't want to skim the topic because it's a very nuanced conversation. So it might be better if we do it, like do a full on conversation about okay. that. Uh, Cause there's a lot to it. I don't want, and I don't want to leave people with like, like not fully dived into information. Yeah. Cause there's a lot of people who are like, oh, that's wrong. Or that's wrong. I'm trying to build context around it. So, yeah. I mean, to answer your question as simply as possible, you know, and, and everything is interconnected. Okay. When you move, that's interconnected to your health. Right. Every, you know, how, no, should you work out because it's good for your health? Yes, you should. How long you work out could be based on the situational factors of your life. Are you going to tell a mom of three by herself that she has to work out for an hour every day? Probably <laughs> not. Like maybe some can, but in her, can they in that situation? Well, that might not be the season of life that she's in, but is 10 minutes beneficial? It absolutely is. Um, you know, do you need to work out to lose weight? The, the real answer is no, you don't need to do it to lose weight, but the goal should not be inherently to lose weight. The goal should be to live a healthy lifestyle. Right. And as a part of that, you are lower in, in fat and lower in weight. Right. So it, it's a very nuanced question. And I, I don't want to, I, yeah. I don't want to give a non-answer because people want an answer, right? So the answer is no, you actually don't need to exercise, go to the gym to lose weight, but it will help. It's better for your, it's better for your longevity. It's better for the quality of your life. It's better for your health, all those different things. But inherently losing, gain, gaining weight is inherently excluding nutrients. We're going to put that in a vacuum. It's a caloric, it's in and out. It's how many calories are you eating? How many are you expending? And are you at the levels that your body is going to accept energy, uh, energy uh, depletion? And right. so that's really the answer to the question is like, it really does depend on the situation, but inherently if you're trying to lose weight, I would recommend, and this is kind of where this is actually point number three of the umbrella terms I was going to go over is the, yeah. uh, the infinite paradox. Um, but basically it's your goal should not be to lose weight necessarily. The goal should be to live a healthier lifestyle. And part of that is to lose weight. And I know it sounds nitpicky and I know it sounds annoying, but it's a, like I talked about at the very beginning, it's a very much a perceptual change. Yeah. Uh, so, I'll, and I'll go into it. So the infinite paradox, right? Yeah. That's the, so that so we talked about point one, which was the internal external. And I want to skip to number three, which is closer to number one is the infinite paradox. When you say you want to lose weight, all right. Well, first off, we all know you actually mean you want to lose fat, but we'll, we'll just use weight as the example. Okay. When you say you want to lose weight, what you're saying is I want to be 40 pounds skinnier than I am now. And then I'm done. What happens when you're done? Well, right. usually one of two things, well, it could be three, but highly unlikely. One is you revert back because now that you've accomplished your goal, uh, yay, I lost 40 pounds or 50 pounds. I'm so happy. That cake looks really good. Well, oh I did so well the last four months. I can have a piece of cake at the wedding now. It's okay. <laughs> oh, birthday. Oh, I can have that slice. Right. You see, it, because you're no longer dedicated because you achieved, you went to the, you got to the top of the mountain. You did it. You achieved it. Great. You hit your goal. And then what happens is you're almost, you almost feel like you have to reward yourself. Oh, I've been so deprived. I can't do all this. And I start eating again. And what happens is you yo-yo back to not, you, you don't retain any of the results. Right. Very, very common occurrence. Yeah. The, the second option, which is not nearly as likely, like that number one happens, I think, you know, in my opinion, probably 85% of the time, like that's usually what happens. Yeah. The other percentage of the time is you have to come up with a new goal in order to keep yourself, quote unquote, motivated and disciplined to keep working hard because the goal was to lose weight. And for example, I think I'm not sure I talked about this last time, but like this could be why it's so hard to win multiple Super Bowls in the NFL because yeah. players are so focused on just winning the that one game that once they win it, it's like I've accomplished what I set up to accomplish for the last 25 years of my life. Yeah. I'm done. Like, I don't like, oh, I'll work hard again, but it'll never be as hard because that was the goal versus someone like a Michael Jordan or a Tom Brady. Who's like, like, no, my goal is to literally be the best that I can ever be. And that means winning multiple of these things. I'm going to work hard every year in perpetuity. There's a difference. Their, their goal is the lifestyle versus yeah. the regular player's goal is just to accomplish that one feat. And if you can change it to that mentality of a lifestyle, you're much more likely to succeed long-term. So the yeah. infinite paradox is you're using a finite goal. Uh, you're using a finite mentality, sorry, a finite mentality on an infinite goal because you don't just stop when you're done. Right. You, it, you're changing your whole life 
forever and therefore it's infinite it's until you're done done and yeah, so yeah. you can't be done until you're done done which i know i'm using a lot of the same words but that's the general idea you can't yeah. use a finite goal for an infinite purpose basically right it does it just doesn't match no that's so true now what was the step two that you were you you skipped over because you you wanted to touch base on step three so step two is my favorite uh, this is this is behavior change 101. This is uh, why we go into a yo-yo diet. So this is why when your friend tells you that this is so amazing, when you, you know friends, oh my god, my friend lost so much weight on this diet over here, or my friend invested all this money and they had a hundred percent return, and we just dive right into it. Yeah. Right. So this is called the valley of despair. This is a behavior change term, basically. So what happens? So it's kind of like a parabola. If you guys, if everyone knows math, or I think mm -hmm. it's a reverse parabola. I'm not sure which one it is, but basically, you 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 have you have this incline slope where you're going up the hill. This is where you're motivated. You're feeling good. It's called uninformed optimism. And basically, what happens is you see something shiny. Someone tells you that something's so amazing. This is the greatest diet of all time. This is the best program. This is the best investing scheme. This is the best stock. This is the best goal, whatever it is. You're like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. I'm going to do that. And you just jump in head first. Great. Sounds familiar. Right? We've all done that to something, right? This sounds great. I got to do it. Yeah. Right. You go up. And as you start to do it, you realize you get to the peak point and then you start to realize right around here, you're going to go on this decline that, you know, this was not as easy as my friend made it out to be. I right. mean, this, this seven day water fast or this 40 day water fast, like they, I thought it was so, oh, I had to do this and then I had to do that. And then this thing has to happen. And then this, and then I have to wait. And then here I got to spend money on this. And, and there's a subscription. Holy crap. I did not realize what I was getting myself into. This is not as easy as I thought. Informed pessimism. That's the next step. So as you're going on that decline, informed pessimism, which is where most of us are like, holy crap, this sucks. And then you keep <laughs> in it and you're doing it and you realize this sucks, this sucks, this sucks until you get to at the bottom point, the valley of despair. Yeah. And basically this is where you, you have, and there's two inflection points here, but really this is where we get to. It's like, this sucks. I'm quitting this. This is stupid, not worth it. My goal was stupid, whatever the reason is, right? This is not worth it. Right. And it could mean anything in your life. And then what happens is, oh, my friend told me that this thing over here is so good. And then, cause you're so low, you go back up something shiny, uninformed optimism, informed pessimism, valley of despair. And when we do this loop forever, that's yo-yo dieting in a nutshell. We do it over and over and over again. Yeah. Now, there's two ways that you can kind of break the cycle, right? One is you go even lower and you basically crash and burn. You just officially just give up and you're done. And I, I'm, I'm sick of everything. I'm just quitting forever. And that's, that's when it's like, it's been 10 years and I haven't, I crashed and burned 10 years ago and I haven't done anything and whatever. Or you get to the bottom and realize, okay, this is hard. But now that I, now that I'm prepared for it to be hard, now you can actually go back as you work harder and harder and keep going and keep pushing, keep pushing, pushing you can slowly climb up the hill to informed optimism right. and past informed optimism is success. And the issue is most of us don't want to put in the work because we didn't think it would be that hard. Yeah. And we never, we never get past the Valley because we don't want to put in the work, but if we just put in the work and just kept going, kept grinding on, kept doing what we were told to do or whatever the protocol is, we would start to see results and we would start understanding. Okay. Oh yeah. That makes sense. I did this. I got better at this. Versus the constant repeat cycle of doing something new because we thought it would be easy. We want the easy way out. So that's uninformed optimism and the value of despair in a nutshell. And that's how you create the yo-yo cycle of doing diet one, diet two, diet three, investing two, investing three, all these different things over and over and over and over again. And it, all, it's, you know, it doesn't happen weekly. It happens in months or years, yeah. or whatever it might be. And we just don't realize it because we're not paying close enough attention to it. And it's crazy because it's a billion dollar business. People spend oh. so much money trying to all these diets. And, and like you said, overall, they end up failing because they go back to where they started. They lose the weight. And then all of a sudden, as soon as they stop, they gain the weight right back. Yeah. And it, it, I mean, it's, it's a terrible cycle. And the only way out of it that I can really see is it, before you jump into anything, number one, is just 
maybe don't jump into it right away and do some quick research and analysis. And I, and I say that very, just Google it. Like Google, like how can I, like what do I have to do? What's the protocol and figure out, or if you, when you find out it sucks at informed pessimism, push, just put in like and, and own it and own it and own it because it might be your thing. And you don't know that. So that's really, and it's, it's not the greatest advice in the world because it's like, just, just work harder. It's kind of like the advice, but like really it's do some research ahead of time. Of, okay. Like, what is this? Like one person says this, but is, what, what do the reviews say? Well, that's why reviews of, of everything online are so important because we want to know what other people think about this. And exactly. you realize after you bought it, it has like, three five stars and like three three stars and seven one stars you're like oh crap this isn't as good as i thought it was gonna be i thought i thought it was all five stars my mistake um so that's one piece just kind of look ahead of time don't just jump in anything and yeah. when you're in there and it's harder than you thought understand that that's that that's the process so either you're in with how hard it's going to be or you're not but going into it right. understand that it's going to be harder than you think is a very valuable tool because it changes the perception of the game that you're playing because right. if you go into it thinking it's going to be easy then you know, the second it gets hard, you're going to want to quit. But if you go into it knowing this is going to be some work, it changes the game completely. Uh, and I think that's a very valuable thing to take away from it. Oh, I agree 100%. That's excellent advice. And I'm wondering too, like, you know, when it comes to carbs, so they tell you to eat healthy. So, you know, black beans are healthy. They, you know, it has protein in it. Then you have, you know, you have certain foods like sweet potatoes, low calorie and all this stuff, but it falls under carbs. And there are lots of, you know, foods that are healthy and clean, but they're, they go underneath the carb area. How much carbs is good, you know, before it gets bad? Because a lot of times, you you know, you can get that full feeling or maybe, you know, I don't know if it's, you know, maybe the, can, can it cause the inflammation too many carbs because you get that bloating effect, you know, but what do you, what's your take on carbs when people are trying to lose weight? So carbs get a bad rap. Uh, they're fine. Uh, it just depends on the type. Like you're not going to get, I don't, I don't think the, I think we're overplaying the inflammation of eating good carbs. I think it does okay. happen, but I don't think it's, gotcha. I think generally speaking, if people were just to eat better. Generally speaking, a lot of these issues would go away. I don't think, yeah. need I don't think it's the, 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 the exact balance of this and that, and this car, I think it's just eat better and stop having fried food all the time gotcha. and going to all these fast food reds. I think it's generally speaking, again, there are situations out there that I'm not accounting for, but that's the general yeah. idea. Uh, how many carbs are good carbs? So, I mean, there's, there is a ratio, uh, again, it also depends on your goals. So it's hard. Like, this is why coaching is so important because they, they will customize yeah. the approach, but generally speaking, if you're between 30, I'll say 30 to 45% of your daily intake in carbs, if you're an active person, it's pretty good. Um, right. that's a pretty good amount of carbs. Now you're like, what does that even mean? Well, I had to do some math to get you to the answer. So for example, one carbohydrate, a gram of carbohydrate equals four calories. Okay. So if you eat a hundred grams of carbs, you know, that's roughly 400 calories of uh, that you've consumed. And right. so that's, so when I say eat, you know, uh, so let's, let's say you eat 2000, I'm going to do some quick math here. So don't, I'm going to yeah. apologize if I'm off so <laughs> let's say you eat 2000 calories a day. All right. And I said, you could eat. 30 per, uh, 40% of those calories and carbs. So how, what's 40% of 2000? I believe it's 800. Right. If I had to take a stab at the number. So 800 divided by four looks to be 200 grams of carbs a day. Bang, right? A, a single serving of an apple, I think is like 30 carbs. Uh, a pear is about 30 carbs. An orange right. banana, about 30 carbs each, right? Uh, I think if you have beans are probably looking at a serving of beans is probably like 20 something carbs. I'm, I'm just using the top of my head. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. So I don't, I don't, be, I think if you stick within that model, uh, you would probably be pretty set to go, you know, uh, sweet potatoes are probably 30 to 40 grams of carbs per serving and things like that. Rice, quinoa, lentils, all those different things. They're all good, generally good to eat. So you just have to kind of find what works for you. Right. Um, no, obviously bloating, if you're eating too much food, yeah, that could be, that could be an issue, but for a general purpose conversation, I wouldn't worry about it if you, but you also could just have an intolerance to a specific food. And that, right. that could just really be, I mean, sweet potatoes are great because they're supposed to reduce inflammation, not cause inflammation. Right. So, uh, it, it kind of, but I, I would say that's kind of the answer when it comes to how many carbs generally is, Yeah. I don't know, anywhere between 30 to 45%. And if you're active, if you're not active, maybe on the lower side. Yeah. And I think that would be a good kind of way to look into it, depending on how many calories you're trying to consume. And again, take your goal into consideration or what you're trying to do into consideration. 
because you know it gets so confusing because you have so many people out there on the internet stating you know making things so much there's like so much controversy one person says eggs are good for you one person says eggs are not good for you eggs yeah. are good for you <laughs> like, like again what we when we speak about certain foods being good or bad it's all about context yeah eggs are again not eggs are good for you basically period now, if you're someone who has an intolerance to eggs or you you know, there might, you might have a cholesterol problem, then maybe the doctor's like, well, we don't want to mix more cholesterol. Okay, fine. Fair enough. But eggs are generally speaking a very, very healthy choice. Right. Uh, not to hammer eggs, but like for the most part, under people say things and they, and yeah. they do it under a very specific context. Yeah. You know, I could say right now on this, on this thing, uh, sweet potatoes and rice are terrible for you. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's all people hear. But the context behind it is if you're on a keto diet, right? right. Or if you're on, like, it's, it's like, or if you're doing a, a physique show and you can't have carbs, like they're yeah. terrible for you if you're doing that, but they're not terrible for you. Generally, if you're just, you know, the average person like me, just trying to, you know, lift some weights, gain some muscle, lose some yeah. fat and get in shape. Oh, oh, they're great. Do it. Like you should be doing it. Right. You know, it's it's funny because it's like, you know, so many people are, are dying to lose weight, but they just, you know. They just didn't, they just don't know how to start, you know, and, you know, so if you had to sum it up and you really had to, you know, tell people, all right, if you want to lose weight, what are some of the main things people should, you know, overall, everything that we discussed, what should they keep in their mind? So I would say, you know, the three things I mentioned before, making sure that understanding if you're going to go an internal goal, make sure that make sure you understand what external protocols are in place and how that affects you. If you're going to learn or if you're going to rely on someone else the rest of your life, which again, there's no issue with either, just understanding which one you want, uh, not jumping into so number two, not jumping into anything without kind of looking at it first and understanding the difficulty and the time it's going to take to succeed in it. So that's the uh, uninformed optimism. And then uh, the, the third one is the um, the infinite paradox, understanding that, you know, what happens when you do achieve your goal? Can yeah. you, are you going to stick with it? And then I would say some general pieces of advice could be things like, you know, don't go from zero to 60, you know, like start where you're at and make mild changes. So for example, if you have seven, you know, co uh, Pepsis a day, yeah. then maybe seven a day, so let's say one a day, seven a week, maybe shoot maybe one of those days go to half yeah. and now you're at six and a half. And then the week after go to six and then go to five and a half, like things like that do make a world of difference. Just slowly getting rid of things and adding good things. If you don't have fruit, add one serving of fruit, whatever your favorite, add one serving. If you don't have vegetables, buy frozen vegetables. Like let, do, do whatever the least action required is necessary to improve and do that because then you'll start getting wins over time. What yeah. most people do, in my opinion, again, this is just me, training people is they look at the big picture and they stare at this big picture. They stare at this eight ball. I need to lose a hundred pounds. And they get so demoralized because they're staring at the scale every day. They're staring at this diet's not doing this or this. Is, and it's like, just if you break down the actions that you have to take in order to achieve the goal, yeah. then you're more likely to achieve it because you're breaking down the noise in your head. It's the noise in your head. That's just, you know, Oh, I can't do it. Oh, this sucks. I want to go faster. I want that. And just, it's, it's constantly just, just blaring at you. And if you can just dial it down, take yeah. a step back and go, okay, what do I have to do? All, right. and, and sometimes just reverse engineer it. So if you want to lose 40 pounds, what's the best way not to lose 40 pounds? Well, I would eat like crap. I would have no no discipline on what I eat. I eat at all hours. You, know, you you would break down the opposite and just do the opposite of what that is. Yeah. Uh, and so that's another piece is just reverse engineer it a little bit. Okay. So, you know, instead of what do I have to do to lose forty pounds? What what would I have to do to not lose forty pounds? Or how do I gain forty pounds? Like what's the opposite? And then do the opposite of what you just thought about. So yeah. I think things like that are very beneficial. But yeah, just don't let the voices in your head dictate what you're doing. Break it down. What are some action items and Focus, and this is hard as I, as I know, I'm going to say it and I was going to roll their eyes, but focus on the journey of it. If okay. you know being in a slight caloric deficit is going to help you lose weight, if you know working out for 30 minutes a day is going to help you lose weight, if you know that eating healthy while you're in the caloric deficit, generally speaking, is going to help you lose weight, then do those things. Don't yes. worry about the scale. Do those things consistently day in and day out. And then it put, you know, put your head down, do the work. And in a month, oh, I'm five pounds lighter. I'm six pounds lighter. Who knew? And then keep doing versus every day trying to get results, get results, get results, get results. No, just put the, do the work, focus on the work. The winner 
focuses on the activities while the yeah. loser focuses on the the outcome, right? So it's like you got to focus on the activities all the time. If you're doing the activities, you're succeeding versus, oh, I did all these great things. I, I ate healthy. I'm in a caloric deficit, but yet my weight didn't change. So clearly I'm doing the wrong thing. And therefore I, I, I'm i going to quit. No, focus on the good stuff, not the bad yeah. stuff. Okay. And that, that's, that'd be my recommendation. Thank it's a mental you. game. It's all a mental game. It really is, you know, and I think I can't tell you how many people I know, including myself, I do this too. It's like you weigh yourself almost every day, you know, yeah, oh, I, did I, I go down a pound or, you know, it's the worst thing to do. You're not supposed to do it, you know. Get rid of your scale. It, it, the scale is such a terrible indicator of success. First off, weight has nothing to do with how you look. So like, that makes no sense to me. I want to lose 20 pounds. No, you don't. You want to look 20 pounds skinnier, which yeah. is losing fat. Cause I can make you lose 20 pounds, but then you're going to lose 20 pounds of muscle yeah. or muscle with fat. You want to retain your muscle because how you look is really just body composition. Right. It's just your muscle to fat ratio. And yeah. so you have two ways to adjust how you look. One, lose fat to gain muscle or some sort of combination. And so the weight actually doesn't do anything. My brother and I weigh the same exact amount. We both weigh about 170. I work out and he does it. I can just leave it to the imagination. We look very different when we have our shirts off. Like it's just, it's yeah. just but we weigh the same and we're, and we're the same height, but the weight, the weight has nothing to do with it. It's all about the fat and people kind of don't. So when I train clients, I'm very clear. Do you want to lose the weight just to lose the weight? Or do you want to lose the fat to look better? And it's very clear. They all, and everyone says they want to lose the fat. So I try to get rid of the scale excuse because the, the weight we have doesn't matter. It's all about how you look. So yes. like, Doing monthly pictures, progress uh, progress pictures is a very valuable way to see progress over time. Or do you have a pair of clothes that you want to fit into? Using yeah. those clothes once a month, how much closer are you to fitting in those clothes? Right. Those are real metrics that we can use versus the weight, which accounts for so many different things, yeah. which is bone density, salt intake, water, not relevant at all. And it's the most discouraging thing. We yes. can use it for trending data year over year, but it's not worth looking at daily, weekly, and sometimes even monthly to be honest, depending on and for the average person. Oh, you're a hundred percent right. And, and I think, you know, sometimes you put yourself in that bad habit and you do it, but you know, really realistically, I, I know that's true. And, and it's like, but you put, you put yourself, it's like, in, into that bad habit and it's like you know that's the one of the worst things like you said to do because you could eat something that's salty the day before and you can go up three pounds and then you know you're good for a day and you're, you're not eating salty and you're drinking a lot of water and then the next day you're you're lighter again you know and, and I remember when I was losing weight and I was exercising a lot I was like I started getting annoyed because I would go on the scale and I was actually getting heavier because of the muscle mass and I would but my clothes was getting looser you know, and, uh, <laughs> uh what's more was, important, what's more important, the scale or the, or the clothes, the clothes, but I was still getting pissed off because I go on the scale and the scale had the higher numbers. And it's like, mentally, I'm like, okay, I want to, I want to be like, you know, I want to be X amount of pounds. And I'm like, you know, but then when I would put, would put on a pair of jeans, the jeans were baggy on me and they weren't baggy before. Yeah. You know, so that's then that's all you need that's the proof right there like that's that's how it works is because again you're, you're also if you're weight training while you're losing weight like you're going to gain muscle which is what's going to help you know right uh help you in the process and that's how you, you know pa you know pants sag or clothes fit better and because you have more muscle less fat and it's a whole process but at the end of the day it starts with the mentality of it it's how do you go into this and yeah. if you're going into it with the wrong mentality then it, it then most people do you're going to end up just restarting next year at the same oh this is my year and then 2025 this is my year and then 2026 this is my and every year is your year for about two and a half weeks and then you give up and it's like you, you ask wow man how, how come i can't lose weight because you have the wrong perspective when you're going into it right exactly exactly now you're you're working on uh you were working on this program and you have like a presentation now is is this the presentation that you're going to be like teaching people yeah. So the three things I talked about, uh, it'll be a little bit more in depth with a few more like pictures and explanations than me just trying to figure it out on screen. But yeah, yeah that, that, so basically why diets don't work and how to actually get results with a few more action items and things like that attached. Yeah. Are they going to be able to find that on your website? Where would they have to go? Or is this going to be like a speaking presentation that you'll be Spe doing? Speaking. So it's not going to be public yet, but eventually it will be. So once, you know, once I start doing it, uh, I will have it on the website or on YouTube or somewhere that it will, so people can see it as well. Yes. It eventually will be. But now it's not right. Now. If they wanted to contact you for speaking events, they could just contact you from your website or an email address. 
Yeah, the website's great. Uh, there's a little contact me tab or uh, Scott uh, Scott at scottspeaksfitness.com uh, is the email address. So either way, anybody contact me, I answer everything and check it all every day. And uh, yeah, for sure. If you have any sort of speaking events, more than happy to. You know, I, I feel like this has been so valuable because, it, you know, this is something that so many people struggle with. Most people struggle with. And, you know, it's it's a it's a daily battle for everybody, because especially in the United States, where we're oh. surrounded by such unhealthy foods and so many processed foods and everybody's on the run and on the go. You know, it's it's sometimes it, it gets really um what's the word? It, it's just, it, it's, it gets hard basically. It's, it's discouraging. You know? Yeah. You know, so it's like, you know, like, like you mentioned all these things, it's a change of lifestyle and being consistent, you know, and just sticking to it, even though it gets hard at times, it's just fighting through it and really thinking about what's your end goal. What do you want to do? You know, how do you, you know, what, what is your, your true goal, you know? And, and, you know, and like you said, don't look at the big picture, just, you know, look at the smaller picture, like, where do you want to be, you know, give yourself, I think, like, is that basically what you're saying is give yourself a constructive goal that's realistic, and just focus on on doing the right thing and eating healthy and not going crazy. But, you know, you, you know, basically, you also said too, you could, yeah, you could have treats, you just can't have a whole bag of almonds, but two Oreo cookies is not going to hurt every once in a while. No. <laughs> I have, I have junk food every single day, every mm -hmm. single day, but it's five to 10% of what I eat. And it's ra it, I try to ration out ahead of time. Sometimes I don't, but I try to ration it out. But I mean, think about it this way, just give it, give it maybe different context. You're in a job. Okay. And you, you make whatever you make, right? Whatever, $50,000 a year, whatever, whatever the, the salary is. And yeah. you're not looking at your paycheck every single day. If the number is increased, cause you want to raise right. what you, but what you're doing every single day, assuming you like your job and you're working hard is that you're putting in the work, you're putting in the hours, you're putting in the work, yeah. you're going above and beyond. You're making it noticed that by the time when raises come out or when bonuses come out, that everyone's gonna be, Oh my God, look at all this work. This person did. They're definitely getting the raise and bonus. Well, right. The same is true for your diet, right? Like you don't, you don't need to look at the results every single day. Look at the progress. Look at the, the actions that you're taking on a regular basis are you doing more good than harm? And yeah. eventually, if you keep doing that and just stick your head down and push forward, you are going to see results. Because fitness is one of the few things in life that is not guaranteed, but pretty dang close to guarantee. If you just yeah. do the right things for a long enough period of time, you're going to see results. And there's very few things in this world that we can really count on. And fitness happens to be one of them. And yeah, it still happens to be one of the most difficult, which is crazy yeah. to me. Uh, like there is literally a blueprint to follow. Yeah. There's nuance. There's my new show. There's crap, but like the basics are right there for you. And yet we, we try to get, we try to get fancy with all these different things. No, just stick to the fundamentals, go at it, be consistent, progress over time, be patient. Don't look your weight every day. And if you just put your head down, I guarantee you, I, I, I guarantee you right now, if you just do those things, eat healthy, you know, kind of get your action plan in place, you will see amazing results in six months. I mean, that sounds like a long time, but I mean, you know, how old are you and how long have you been like this? And how long have you wanted to lose weight for it? Is six yeah. months really that bad? It's not, I mean, you'll, you've been in the job for 10 years, right? So how, you know, is exactly. it really that long of a time to see some sort of really good results? Um, you know, I was actually listening to, um, I'm not sure all of you, I know you got to wrap up, but Dane Cook was mm -hmm. talking about his journey to start up and everyone thinks Dane Cook just kind of like popped out of nowhere. And he was this amazing, you know, I'm aging myself a little bit, but when I was a kid, he was like the comedian in the world, yeah. the, the best improv comedian in the planet. Right. And, but his story was he had been basically homeless living out of his car for like eight years oh, wow. doing basically unpaid or very low paid gigs for eight years did, like nothing again if he had had the mentality of oh my gosh every day looking at the results and looking at his bank account and looking at the gig like he would have quit but his yeah. thing was just put the work in put the work in put the work in put the work in and eventually it paid off yes. and there's so many similar stories like that out there from just from again those are more career success standpoints but it's the same concept to diet and fitness is just put the work in, just go every yeah. you know go when you can be consistent and again if you're not seeing results fast enough then there are things you have to change and levers you have to press to change it but overall right. it's not you know it's like those guys in the mirror doing bicep curls and they look at, it's like yeah, it's like, oh my gosh, like it's not going to grow overnight, dude. Like, give it three <laughs> months, it'll grow, like, calm it down. And like, it drives me crazy. Same thing with your weight, it's not going to change overnight. Yeah. You know, but if you do the right things, don't eat processed foods or eat very few processed foods, 
you know, be in a slight caloric deficit, generally speaking, exercise regularly, like those things by themselves are going to significantly enhance what you're doing and you're going to right. see results. That's amazing advice. You know, I, I love everything that you shared today. It's been very, 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 very valuable. And is there anything else that you'd like to, to say before we go? No, uh, just make sure you guys check it out. Check out the show, uh, The Power of Progress on all sh all, the, all the platforms, the, the Apple Podcast, Spotify, all those different things. And you mentioned the website. So no, I think we're good to go. All right. Well, Scott, this has been amazing. Thank you so much for coming on the show. And thank you for talking about this topic because everybody, you know, is always trying to lose weight and, and they're trying to look their best or, you know, or they, they've tried and they've gotten so unmotivated that they stopped trying. But really, if they if they kind of go by, you know, the, the different steps that you mentioned today, you know, there's hope. There's always hope, you know, you just have to be consistent and, and you know, and, and believe in yourself because yeah. everybody can do it. We all can do it. At yeah. minimum, if you don't believe in yourself, just do it. Like just do the action because it'll right. still happen. Yeah, exactly. Well, thank you so much, Scott. This Absolutely. has been amazing. Yes, thank you. You have a great day. So.